Welcome to Women in the Arena podcast, the podcast celebrating women doing extraordinary things in plain sight. I'm your host, Audra Egan, and our mission is to elevate the value, strength, and resilience each woman brings to the world. Without further delay, let's go ahead and start the show. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you that are new here, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Audra, and I'm the host of Women in the Arena podcast. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to our community. We are a community of women and men that are trying to change the world one interview at a time. We are listening to these women's stories that are stories of triumph, of inspiration. I hope that they make you think. But more importantly, I hope that they demonstrate that we are way more similar than we are different. And that once we remove those barriers between us, there's no stopping us. And this week's guest is such a shining example of that. I cannot wait for you to meet her. When I met her, I was so inspired by her story, uh, the story of being an underdog that triumphs over her circumstances. Not only does she triumph over her circumstances, she's teaching other women to do the same. I cannot wait for you to hear her story. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start the show. Welcome in, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. You are in for yet another treat. Today, my guest is Cynthia Williams-Bay, and she is amazing. She is a true inspiration to me. Uh, just, Just listen to some of the things that she accomplishes. First of all, she's a wife and mother of five children, so she's already busy. She is the CEO of Heaven Sent Child Care, which she built brick by brick, which we will talk about today. She is also a community leader, a pastor, a best-selling author. She has been featured on both the Entrepreneur Magazine and CEO Magazine. She is remarkable, and it is my pleasure and my honor to introduce to you Cynthia Williams-Bay. Cynthia, thank you so much for joining me today, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Audra. I just count it an honor that you allow me to be on your platform. Thank you to all the listeners that's tuning in. I'm just really excited to just have a conversation with you all today and just inspire you and cover you with my story. I, I can't wait for you to tell the story because everyone, when she when I first got to know her and she told me her story... She gave me chills and she gave me inspiration, and I hope she does the same for all of you. Uh, But before we get into that, Cynthia, will you tell us a little bit more about yourself, just so we can get a little bit, a little bit into your into your world? Yeah. So outside of the businesses and the ventures that I'm doing, I'm just simply Cynthia. You know, I'm a girl that grew up in uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, which everyone knows in Bedford-Stuyvesant in Brooklyn, it's not the greatest community. But I was just a girl that grew up in um, Brooklyn that just had aspirations, that had dreams, and just wondered what can be on the other side of this. Just growing up in an environment where there's a lot of crime, there's a lot of poverty, there's a lack of hope. You never envision yourself, or rather, I never envisioned myself actually being in this place. I would daydream about it, but I didn't really know that it could be a reality that I could make it. So I just love, you know, where I'm in right now. I love God. <laughs> I love, love, love God. And I just enjoy being home with my family. I enjoy cooking. I love watching movies. That's like my favorite thing, just to like Netflix and chill, right? 
<laughs> we've been doing a lot of that lately. For a whole year, we've been Netflixing and chilling and really watching Netflix. Yeah. So while the world is going crazy, like, when can we get out? I'm like, keep us in. <laughs> this is my space. I, I love being in the house. I love being with my family. Coming from a big family, it was about 19 of us, brothers and sisters, between my mom and my dad. And then in my household growing up, it, I'm the youngest of six with my mom. But in our house, my siblings live there uh, as well as their spouses and their children. <laughs> so it was literally about 15 of us or more, you know, living in a three bedroom apartment. So I was just so used to that community of family and a lot of kids and a lot of love and events always happening because that that's how I grew up. So you were you grew up surrounded with family and people, but also in an environment that didn't lend itself to a whole lot of hope or opportunity. But you changed that. You changed that completely for yourself and for the people around you and for your community. So that's actually what we're going to talk about today is how you started from extremely humble beginnings, how you you created you created an entire empire based on first of all necessity and second of all on on uh your wits uh you have basically the op- the opportunities that you had at your fingertips which wasn't a whole lot you basically turned very little into a whole lot yes and you know and a little bit of luck and a lot of faith and yes. those are the things that I want to talk to you about today and share with the audience, because like I said at the beginning, she is personally an inspiration to me, and I hope that she is an inspiration to all of you. So Cynthia, tell us about your magnificent journey. Wow. So where do I start? <laughs> so losing my mom back in 1999, it just caused me to start looking for ways to fill that void of not having her there, not having that love. And I found myself working um, in corporate America in New York. And I was actually working for WorldCom Wireless at that time. And everyone knows what happened with (laughs) WorldCom, right? (laughs) Yep. Yep. In case you don't know, let's just say they had a little issue. And they no longer exist. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And I was part of the team when they had that little issue. So I lost my job. And ever since I was 14, I've never had a problem getting a job. And when I tell you, I could not find a job. In New York, I was going to job after job after job. And I thought I found love. So I ended up coming to Virginia, you know, with a young man that I thought, things is going to pan out. And that's a whole nother story. But just to tell you guys how I got to Virginia, it was because I really was trying to fill that void. You know, so I ended up here in Virginia. Things did not pan out the way I thought with that individual. So I found myself just working in corporate America. And mind you, when I left New York, I left everything. I left my family. I left my friends. I left my familiar place. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to do this thing. There has to be more. I don't don't have my mom. So what do I have to lose? You know, so I just was working corporate America. And at that time I met someone and I became pregnant and it was a decision made that that's not something, you know, that that individual wanted in regards to like a marriage or a real commitment. So I found myself as a single mother at that time. And while He's an awesome dad now to my son. At in that moment, when it came to relationship and support and stuff like that, I didn't have that in the beginning. So I found myself struggling because I had a pregnancy that was considered high risk. And we really didn't think I was going to carry my son to full term. So of course, you know what happens in corporate America. I'm going to the doctor. 
so many times having to call out because I'm having like massive bleeding. I'm not talking about minor spotting. I'm talking about massive bleeding and I'm pregnant, like very pregnant. So it's very that's terrifying. That is yes. absolutely terrifying for those yes. of us that have had difficult pregnancies that there, there's no fear that I can explain to you unless you've experienced it on how you feel. Exactly. You know, so it's just like, this is my first child. I don't have my mom, my best friend to guide me through this. My sisters and siblings and cousins and relatives, you know, that family environment that I was surrounded by when I was young, I didn't have that because my siblings, my sisters and my brothers, they had my mom and all of us to kind of help raise the children that were coming in. You know, it was really like a village. But once I left that environment and came to Virginia, I didn't have that village, you know, and I definitely didn't have mom to call and say, hey, mom, how do I get through this? Mom, what do what what should I do? You know, so I found myself on a written warning. And and this was prior to me having my son. I, I was on written warning because, again, so, you kept missing work. I mean, so I so I just want to emphasize the feeling that you were there, you were alone. You yes. didn't, you left your village behind. Um, you were doing this pregnancy by yourself without your son's father. You're in a strange state and you're missing work because you are, you, you're trying to take care of your pregnancy and you're on a written warning. So you're completely by yourself. Yes. And, and you're like, what do I do? Yes. Exactly. You know, so finally, when it came time for me to have my son, I started trying to figure out what I was going to do in regards to childcare. And at that time, when I tell you, I could not find any childcare center that was affordable. The prices were crazy at that time for me, for a single mother, you know, working with a corporate salary. Um, I didn't make that much. Like it would have literally took my entire check just to pay for childcare in the actual facility at that time as a single mother. And, and then, you know, in addition to that, it was just like, I couldn't find anything that was after six, 6 PM, you know, nothing that was after 6 PM. Um, and we all know with corporate America, you have to work night shifts. You have to work um, at least one day during the weekend. And I was just like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, and at that time I, you know, did find some, you know, a a community, right. That helped me spiritually. You know, I found God um, and everything like that, but it's still like, no one could still help me when it came to take care of my children, because people were going to work to try to take care of theirs. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it was just, it was so stressful, but I finally found someone that was providing care out of the home. She was referred to me by a coworker. And when I tell you every time I picked my son up, it was always something, Audra, it was always something. If my son wasn't um, completely dirty Mind you, he wasn't even five months. <laughs> My son was born New Year's of 2005. He was not even five months or four months at that matter. But it was just like every time I picked him up, it was something wrong. Um, or he would be sitting in his snowsuit in the car seat as if they were waiting for me. I mean, sweating, which is a problem. And the last straw for me was I picked them up one day and I smelled smoke, like the debris of smoke. So apparently her husband was smoking in the home around the children. And it just bothered me. And it was just like, after that interaction, I, my son started, he was wheezing and having issues. And I had to rush him to the hospital and turn out he developed RSV. So for those of you that know about RSV, It is really bad when it comes to um, infants, you know, and it could be deadly, you know, because it affects your respiratory system and it affects their breathing and it could be really, really bad. So I ended up 
you know, with my son in the hospital. He was there for not one day or two days, but he was there for nearly a week, nearly a week. And the bank didn't care. Like (laughs) I got written up. There was no FMLA or anything to protect me at all. You know, I had got, I was on the final warning. I'm just like, oh my God. So I just remember sitting at my cubicle one day and literally crying out to God and saying, what am I going to do? I'm on a written warning. My son cannot go back to this, this child care um, home because they're not taking care of him. There's things in the environment that could be detrimental to him. And he needs me to nurse him back to health. So I had to make a decision and I literally heard the words heaven sent as I'm sitting there at my cubicle. And I literally, Audra, thought that perhaps someone was talking next to me. (laughs) And That's how crazy, you know, things are when it comes to God, when he's like really calling you to purpose. And I looked around and I was like, heaven sent. And then all of a sudden I started to have flashbacks of my childhood with my mom and the environment. See, my mom was a high school dropout. So what she would do to help supplement the funds that she got from the government to take care of us, she would watch the children of all the working moms in the neighborhood. And that's how she would get funds to help provide for us. And I did not have any type of background in business. I did not have any type of degree in childcare. I had no idea how to write a business plan, but I started writing. I started right there, writing. right there at your cubicle. Yes. At my cubicle, <laughs> I started writing. I took a piece of paper, <laughs> a plain piece of paper, and I wrote out the name heaven sent. And then I started thinking about, God, if I'm going through this, it has to be so many other women that's going through this. I cannot be the only one. What can I do to not just help me, but how can I help these other women? Because I don't want anyone to be in a position that I'm in and feel like they have to choose between their job and their child. And I started- I can assure you, being a working mom, that that isn't just isolated to Virginia. That's- everywhere that was over here in arizona and the the guilt that goes with i have to leave my child with somebody else because i've got to go make a living is sometimes crushing and what makes it bearable is knowing that you are leaving your child in good hands someone that would take care of your child the way you would that's the only thing that makes that guilt be able to be lived with. That's the only thing that helps that. It doesn't make yes. it go away, but it makes it bearable. Yes, exactly. And I'm just like, oh my God. So I I literally, by the time my shift finished, I had an entire business plan. I knew who my client was going to be. I knew what my price was going to be because I based it off of me, you know, as a single mother. Cynthia, are you able to pay this amount as a single mother? What is the amount that you can afford? I wrote that down and I said, if I can afford this, this is what they can afford. Because this is what my salary looks like. And this is average. So I based it off of that. I knew the hours I was going to operate. I had everything written down. And again, I did not have any knowledge of how to do a business plan or anything. I just literally rolled the vision and made it plain. That's it. Rolled the vision and made it plain. And I began, after that, I began speaking to my coworkers and asking them questions in regards to their experience with childcare. If they had any suggestions in regards to certain things that they felt was missing and, and things like that. And I added that to what I wrote down. And I literally spoke to a manager at the bank. And and that's why I say this was all destined to happen because it is not um, within their protocol to allow you to solicit oh, on no. the job or anything no, like that. No, no, no. That is definitely a no-no. 
Yes, exactly. And when I told them the idea, they allowed me to hang up a flyer inside of the break room on my call center floor. So I did that. I hung up flyers on my floor. I hung up flyers on other floors and I set up a date to do an open house. Now, mind you, I'm in a one bedroom apartment and I'm still like, okay, God, you're saying to do this. I'm going to do it. It sounds crazy. I don't know how I'm going to pull this off, right? (laughs) In a one bedroom apartment, but I'm going to trust you. And literally I took, it it cost less than a hundred dollars, Audra. I went to thrift stores, like once upon a child, the Dollar Tree, and I just bought stuff, you know, and I literally set my entire living room and patio area area up like a nursery. You know, I got um, products and uh, toys and um, play pens and all this stuff and just set it up. And I had the open house. And at the time I did a, you know, I did develop a relationship with a young lady. She's my best friend to this day. And she, you know, she's the only one that was just like, okay, go. Cause she was a single mother too. So she understood my crazy, <laughs> my crazy. <laughs> face. She's like, come on, what do you got to lose? Come on, let's do this. You know, exactly. So, it's like, how bad could it be? I mean, yes. one apartment. yes, let's, let's do this thing. It, what's it? Things could be weirder. Exactly. You know, and she was in a situation too. And she's like, listen, um, my my baby, I trust you. So he was literally my first, first child, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Off the record. (laughs) My God. (laughs) But literally I put it up and next thing I know, people showed up. Like people literally showed up for the open house. I was just like, I was blown away. And it wasn't like one or two people came, like a lot of people was coming. Like my house looked like (laughs) a store, like people were coming back to back, you know, just to look at the space, to get to know me. I told them my story. And literally by the time the night ended, I had my first five clients and they all were Bank of America employees. I had contracts, everything. And I gave them a date, a two week date. I said, okay, this is the date that we're going to open. And everybody was in agreement. I mean, I even had registration fees. People register and secure their spot that day. Wow. And first of all, I think it's super brilliant that you put together an open house. Who would have thought of that? I mean, I mean, we've all, we've all, looked for child care for those of us that are that are working professionals and we needed child care outside of the home no one ever does an open house no one ever says please come in and check it out and and come in and visit my space they just don't do that and i think that was brilliant that you said i, I want to invite you all in please come and check me out come meet me come see the space and tell me what you think i, I think that that was a brilliant move yes Yes. And I was just like, oh my God. I mean, and it was just amazing. And it was, it's so funny because, you know, now I have, you know, four daughters. Um, I have a lot of girls and I have one son, but when I started the daycare, I only had one little girl. Everybody else was boys. (laughs) 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 So you can imagine like my son was happy because he had all these little boys to like, play with and grow up with, you know, and I'm still in relation, um, in relationships and, uh, things like that with some of those same parents to this day that started out with me and just seeing the pictures of the kids, like some of them are like, they didn't graduate high school and, uh, go on to college. And I'm just like, Oh my God. Like <laughs> when I'm looking at their stories and things like that, you know, on Facebook with, from their parents, like posting and sending me pictures, but it was just like, I couldn't believe it, you know? And that guys, that was in 2005 and we're in 2021 and I'm still doing and living out the manifestation and the vision that God gave me for heaven sent childcare. Has it been easy? Absolutely. No. 
because we understand the growth process and anything with growth. Yes, it's going to hurt. Like people think like growth is something beautiful. But when you think about a flyer, uh, well, a flower, rather, when you think about that flower, it has to bud and the budding process isn't good. Right. That that Ooh. seed has to break. It has to break through the seed and the dirt and all that stuff. So it's definitely been a process. It's definitely been a journey. It's definitely been a lot of lessons, good, bad, ugly, failures, mistakes. But it's also been so rewarding, you know, to be able to be in a position to one help my son back to health because since that time, my son has not had any medical issues. He is a, such a healthy 16 year old man, you know, and I'm just like, wow, God, you know, where it was just like always issues, you know, with him. And I'm just like, wow, he hasn't been sick since then. So I, I want everybody to make sure that they can understand the magnitude of what you created based on very humble beginnings. And like I said, out of necessity, you had no other choice. So you started your business out of that one bedroom apartment with with um, secondhand uh, equipment for uh, for children. And we all know how expensive all of that stuff is: play pins, swings, e- extra uh, infant seats. It's super expensive. It adds up quickly. So you had the forethought to go. Uh, I'll just go buy it used and and you stocked your very humble childcare out of your one bedroom apartment as a single mom. Will you please tell everybody where you're at now, 16 years later, let's just start with the childcare first and then you can work your way up. (laughs) Yes. So since that time, when I started in that one bedroom apartment, it started to grow and I went from the one bedroom, my leasing company, (laughs) they moved me to a two bedroom on the first floor. Like even they were supporting me and what I was doing. So they moved me to a two bedroom apartment on the first floor to make it more accessible for the parents and worried about the kids going up and down the stairs. So I went to that two bedroom. And then from there, I went to my first house ever. Now, mind you guys, remember I told you I grew up in Brooklyn in subsidized housing, public assistance with about 15 of us living in a three bedroom apartment. I moved to my first house ever. I never lived in a house. I never ran in grass (laughs) at all. And I was able to give these kids that experience and my son the experience that I didn't even have growing up. So I was in that five bedroom, um, the five bedroom house and I became licensed. So when I started, I was unregulated. Then I went to become voluntarily registered. Then I became licensed by the state of Virginia. And because of the amount of kids that I was receiving. And then finally my husband, and this is why it's important. Like you know, women, whether you marry, inspiring, aspiring to be married, make sure that 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 spouse understands what's happening in your life and understands the purpose that God has on your life and that they're able to help assist and speak to that thing. Because my husband saw something that I didn't see. And he's like, you need a building. And at that time, I was just trying to steward what God had given me well. And I wasn't thinking about an actual building, but my husband spoke that to me. So what did he do? He stepped in and he started assisting me with the daycare. I was pregnant too. I was pregnant with my, my second child, Lyric, my baby girl. And my husband stepped in and helped me so that way I can go to school. So I was doing the childcare out of the house during the day. And also in the night, because what I did tell you guys I left out is that I was doing 24 hours, guys, seven days a week, 24 hours. I was helping moms 24 hours, seven days a week when I was in the house. And, um, and when I first started even in an apartment, so my husband stepped in and he started helping to allow me to go to school at night. I started going to school at J. Sargerino to prepare to go to a building. 
And the same year that I graduated in 2011 was the same year God gave me my first commercial facility. And I moved the child care from out of the home into my first child care facility. And now, while I don't have that particular location, I transitioned to another area that needed the hours and needed what I had to offer um, in regards to my hours. Uh, now I'm actually opening my second facility in the city of Richmond. I signed that contract in the middle of a pandemic, guys. God gave me a second building in the midst of a pandemic. It said, it's time, like you got to go. And so that building is about to open, but some of the other endeavors and some of the other things that God has been doing, I've, I've launched a childcare, an actual, um, a children's book line under the daycare. So I released my first two children's books in the midst of a pandemic guys called dreamy Dre and dreamy Mexico. That's under heaven sent childcare. I have a radio show that I'm doing um, called the Mrs. Williams Bay Radio Show, where it comes on 101.3 Rejoice FM, 990 AM every Friday from 12 to 1. And I'm just encouraging and inspiring entrepreneurs and, 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 and just women and men in general, you know, to increase their faith and just continue to go after all the things that God has said is due to them. But one of the things that I'm doing now that's really, really, really dear to my heart and I've invested so much is now I've actually launched a program of how to start a home daycare. God has allowed me to take all that knowledge, all the wisdom, everything that I've learned and he's allowed me to do over the past 15 years. I've been able to develop a course so that way I can actually help other single mothers and other moms that's in the situation that I was in 15 years ago. And it's just so ironic because when God had me working on it, Audra, I had no idea that we was about to face this crisis with this pandemic and that hundreds and thousands of women would be placed in the same position I was placed in 15 years ago. Having to choose between working their nine to five or taking care of their children. And that's what's happening right now with this pandemic. So many women have been displaced from their job or so many women have been put, you know, up against the wall. Their backs have been put up against the wall because the schools are closed. There was already a shortage in daycare. Now it's a greatest shortage because of the pandemic. One out of four daycare centers have closed down. And I'm not talking about the homes. I'm talking about the commercial facilities have closed down. CNN did a story, Audra, and of the 144,000 jobs that was lost in the pandemic, they were all held by women. That is a staggering, staggering number, but it's because they're forced to make a choice. Yes. I either have to stay home to make sure that my children are on Zoom class or I go to work. I mean, that's a horrible position to be in. Yes, I get. To, I have to choose between feeding my children or making sure that my children are educated so they can eventually feed themselves. Yes, yes, and it's just and it's just so crazy because I can relate to them. I can I understand how they're feeling. Like, oh my god! So it's just like I was just thinking. I'm like, wow, God! Like you're so strategic in the things <laughs> that you do because it's like. Now I know there's a remnant of women that's going to come through this course and they're going to not only be able to be at home with their children, but they're going to be able to help the other women in their community that guess what are essential workers and they don't have the option to work remotely at home. They don't have the option to say, I can't do this because they're the ones that's out there in the hospitals 24 seven, making sure that our brethren brothers and sisters are safe. Our brothers and sisters are getting better. Like they're covering COVID patients. They're working all these hours. I understand that there's a group of women that's 
that's essentially um, stocking the shelves at the Walmarts and the places where we're able to go and get food, not realizing that it takes individuals to put those things in place. And those individuals have children. So it's like, what happens to the children of the essential workers, the people that's keeping us safe, the individuals that's making our world still go 24 seven, the individuals that are working at Amazon and FedEx, you know, to ensure that all the PPP and, um, you know, the, the, um, the vaccine and the prescriptions and all that stuff get to the pharmacies and get to the hospitals. Like these individual, it's not done, you know, by some type of machines. It's actual single mothers, <laughs> men, <laughs> you yeah, know, single fathers, do, yeah, I mean, single fathers, taking the, the overnight ones. shift just because they have to do what they got to do. Exactly. And the last thing I want is to be able is to turn on the television and see another story like I saw here in Richmond, Virginia, of a single mom that was in desperation, had to go to work, and she left her child with a boyfriend, not her husband, but a boyfriend, and that boyfriend molested and killed her child in a hotel. Oh I don't want to see those stories. No. I don't want to see a story where a mom has to take her child with her on a job interview and leave them in the vehicle and get locked up because she had no support. She had no assistance and she was desperate. Like th those are the individuals that I want to help with this course because now they're not going to have to choose because they'll be able to be at home with their child and also be able to bring in money and not just, replace their corporate salary, but exceed it. Let me tell you, when I was working in <laughs> corporate America, Audra, I was probably making in the low twenties. Listen, mm -hmm. <laughs> I not only exceeded that amount, I, I doubled it. And then some. At least if you have two, if you have two facilities on the way, at least you've made yourself um, financially independent forever. Yes. yes. And I'm, and, and I'm so glad because I want everyone to understand like, while I'm still in this position, right. And, you know, I've accomplished a lot of things. I still face some of the things that a lot of the women and men that may be listening to this have are facing now because now I've essentially, I'm in the same position, you know, but the difference now is because I stepped out on faith and because I put in the work all those years ago, now I'm able to benefit from, I'm able to benefit and enjoy the fruit of my harvest because now I have four more children that I birthed since my son and my kids are at home and I don't have to choose anymore because now I have a staff. I've built the company to a point where I have a staff. So I'm able to have my staff operate in the center and stop by and check in and still guide them. But I can do that from my home to ensure that my other kids are able to be on school and they're, um, getting the assistance they need when it comes to virtual learning, because I have a first grader, you know, and I, it's like I have to stay near her because their attention span, you know, first grade and under, it's hard for them doing virtual learning, and they need. Their I can't parents. even imagine. Yes, but that yes. Just sounds awful, awful. Be I mean, we have we have university students. Here at, at at the Egan household, we have university students on on virtual learning, which is not fun. They are not having a good time, um, and I actually go and check on them to make sure that mm -hmm. they are okay, uh, because this is hard. And they're yeah. they are they are young twenty year olds. You have a seven year old that's trying to maintain her schooling, and you, you basically have to sit there and and watch. Listen. Make sure that she's paying attention. <laughs> yes. 
and then the and then the funny part too is a lot of individuals individuals think, oh, you have a daycare, your kids just go there. Well, no. And the reason I say that is because I don't want my children taking up space at my facility and taken away from parents that need the care. So I decided to keep my children because I have a preschooler too. And my preschool teacher, oh my God, Miss Carolyn, I have to shout her out. She does such an excellent job with the children, you know, and my daughter misses her, but that classroom is full. And I want to make sure that it's able to be full for parents that need it. You know, I'm not just going to have my my children at my daycare just because of my daycare and there's a parent, you know, or five parents because I have five children. So that means that's five spaces is taken up from someone who really need to care. So a lot of individuals don't grasp that part that I keep my children home because I need to make sure it's space for the parents that need to care to be able to bring their kids. You are so... <sighs> selfless in this and i told you guys that she is a personal inspiration to me because she's like i said her magnificent journey where she's created her entire empire started out of necessity and with a a small little dream that was placed in her heart and she built it from a one bedroom apartment on her own if cynthia can do that and coming from humble beginnings and and having her first home when she was in her late 20s, imagine mm-hmm. what all of you can do. Yes. She built she built this, like I told you in the beginning, brick by brick. Imagine what all of you can do. So, Cynthia, there are lots of people listening going, oh, my goodness. So how how can they get in contact with you? Yeah. So anybody that's interested in taking that leap, you know, and just what do you have to lose? Right. (laughs) What do you have to lose? All you have is to gain your freedom, gain the ability to be there and raise your children and not feel like you have to choose. You can go to www.daycaredomination.com and sign up for the class. I did a live Q and a, a few weeks ago where I was answering some questions in regards to starting the childcare center out of your home. And I got an overwhelming (laughs) amount of questions that I couldn't even cover within that one hour of that live Q and a. So that live Q and a is still available. I have a replay for those that want to watch it, but for all the additional questions that I got, what I'm doing is every Wednesday on my Facebook page, Mrs. Williams Bay, you can find me on social media. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and it's at Mrs. Williams Bay. You can find me, but every Wednesday at 7 p.m., I drop a video where I'm answering a question that I didn't get to answer on the live. But yes, that's how you guys can stay uh, connected to me. Um, www.daycaredomination.com. And you can follow me on all social media at Mrs. Williams Bay. And tell us again, uh, when and where we can listen to your radio show. Yes. So yes, the radio show. (laughs) So the radio show is every Friday from 12 to 1 p.m. And we actually stream live from our Facebook page, which is Bay Radio Show. That's how you can find us. And you could uh, you could tune in on Alexa or tune in. And um, and if you're in Richmond, Virginia, surrounded areas, you can you know listen to us on the actual radio on one hundred one point three Rejoice FM. Um, but you can check us out on our website. Is www.bayradioshow.com. And it's actually a show that I do together with my husband. So I usually do most of the interviews and my husband, um, sometimes he interview, but his gift, we kind of put our gifts together. He does an inspirational music mix, uh, which is a little different than the, <laughs> than yeah. the average show, you know, but he uh, does an inspirational music mix. Um, every Friday in between, um, in the middle of the segment, 
So I would love for you guys to just tune in on Fridays, share it. I mean, we've had listeners all the way from Germany, someone tuned in from um, Nigeria. I mean, it's just, it's really amazing just how God is just using us right now. You are a shining example of why I created this podcast. I wanted to showcase women and their value that nobody's ever heard of. So many people are like, they've never heard of me. They've never heard of you. But we are trying to do things and put good work out in the world to change the world for good. This is exactly the reason why this show exists, because I want to introduce the world to as many women as possible to give you a platform to show the value that you're contributing to the world. And Cynthia, you do this so well. And thank you for your work and your continuing to help uplift your community and help them change the world, even if it's just changing the world in their own households. So thank you for that that incredible work and dedication. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I definitely give, I just give all glory and honor to God, you know, but I want everyone to understand and know that While God gives you vision and all glory goes to him, God also gives you a choice and you can either choose to trust him and allow your pain and everything that you're going through to thrust you into your destiny and just follow his guidance. Or you could choose to just sit back and be fearful and allow society and corporate America to dictate you and your future. But I challenge you all to, to go up against the grain, to make the choice, to choose you, to choose your family, to choose your legacy. Don't continue to build someone else's legacy because God says a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Right. And that's what the big CEOs and execs of corporate America understand because generation wealth is generational. Right. It comes from the family. So yep, take this absolutely. time now with this pandemic to cr- start creating that legacy for your family. So that way when you're gone, because I know when I'm gone, heaven sent is still going to be here. So many of the things that we're doing is going to outlast us. And that's the goal. <laughs> I, like I said, create a legacy. Step out. There's something that's been burning in your in your souls for a while. I know that because it's, I I feel the same thing. Step out and try it. What's the worst that could happen? It might work. (laughs) I mean, it, you know, if that's the worst that can happen, go do it. Mm -hmm. Just try it. So Cynthia, before I let you run, I want to ask you a couple of questions. And there are some questions that I've been asking in 2021, because I I want to get to the heart of it. um, Because 2021 is a, is an opportunity for new growth, new birth, new opportunity. So in order to pursue that, Cynthia, what do you need? I'm trying to normalize the idea that us as women speak what we need because we don't do that very well. And you have an entire community out there listening. What is it that you need? Yes, um, for me, I just need the women to take a chance on themselves. Take the class, come to my site, make sure you sign up, you know, follow me, you know, make sure that you take a chance on yourself. Cynthia, before we let you go today, I want to give you an opportunity to leave a final statement with the audience to give them something to to um, think about as they're as they're um, going through their day. Yes. Yes. So I want to leave you guys with two quotes. One of my favorite, um, women, uh, it is, it is so funny because people try to pin it together. Like, wait a minute, how, how you put Mrs. Williams Bay with her, but Rhonda Rousey, I love her. If anyone doesn't know who she is, she's a, a, a boxer and I love her quotes and I follow her. I follow her inspirational quotes. I follow her journey. And one of the things that she had said, and I'm paraphrasing, was just a essential, just talking about how things get tough and how sometimes, you know, it is hard 
you know, being in the industry and, and things like that with boxing and stuff like that. But what one thing that she said that stuck out is regardless of how hard it gets, no matter how tough it gets, it doesn't get tough enough for me to quit. So I, I, I want to leave you ladies with that, regardless of what is happening, regardless of what you're facing, regardless of the things that you're seeing naturally, where it feels like everything might be falling down, or you might feel like your back is up against the wall. Don't quit. Don't allow the times and the circumstances to cause you to give up on your dreams, to give up on your family, to give up on going after the things that you desire and you know that you can acquire. And I'll leave you with my quote, which says, when a world counts you out, count yourself back in. Absolutely. Definitely (laughs) count yourself back in. Cynthia, you are, like I said, um, I, I cannot say this enough. You are an inspiration. And I thank you for spending the time with me today and sharing your story of not only triumph, but some of your failures along the way and that you continue to persevere. So thank you so much for spending that time with me and with us today. I I truly have enjoyed every minute of our conversation. Thank you. Same here. Thank you guys so much for just tuning in and just allowing me and even trusting my voice and listening uh, to my story. Because again, I just wanted to inspire someone, inspire you into your destiny, (laughs) push you into your destiny and your purpose. Absolutely. Step into your your destiny. You never know what you might find there. And thank you all again for listening. And we will see you again next time. And that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for being here. I can never give you enough gratitude because without all of you, none of this is possible. I am still always in awe that my guests are volunteering to be so bold in their vulnerability. So thank you for continuing to do that. And to my audience, audience isn't the right word to describe you. So to you, I thank you. You are a community. So thank you for being a part of this community and thank you for helping to nurture it and make it grow. And of course, you know, I have this incredible team behind me that helps me produce this every single week. For Savannah, Alan, Jessica, Tina, Tisha, and my son, Gavin, thank you so much for believing in me, believing in my mission and continuing to help grow the Women in the Arena podcast. Thank you all so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. That's our show. I am so grateful for each and every one of you and your unwavering support and your continued belief in this movement that has become much bigger than me, much bigger than just a podcast. It has become this forward momentum that we are all doing together. If you are ready or you know somebody that is, that is ready to tell your story and share your value with the world, please connect with me. You can reach me at audra at womeninthearena.net. I am so honored and thankful that you will share your story with me, and I'll make sure that it is well taken care of. I will never stop thanking each and every one of you, and I cannot wait to talk to you again next week as we share another woman's story and we celebrate her doing extraordinary things in plain sight. We'll see you next time.